Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend Symbiosis, where I just noticed a couple of things here. I've been surveying the site of our victory, and it turns out that the extractors and the minor faction villages in this region are already overgrown. We didn't have to spend any food on them. Taking the city over just granted us free overgrowth on every exterior tile improvement that the vaulters have built in the region, which is really, really cool. Um, in particular, this is cool because this is a haunts region. There are three haunts villages in this region, here, here, and over here behind the city name card, which is really handy for us because we had already pacified and assimilated the haunts. So we now have five haunts villages uh, pacified and overgrown, which means we are receiving 25% bonus science. This has worked out really, really well for us. I also noted that our Empire Approval value is 86% right now. Usually how this works is it's a weighted average of all of your city approval values. However, for us, we only have one city approval value and it is well over 100. I think it's like 110 right now. So I'm not entirely sure why this is showing 86%. It could be some weirdness with the fact that we conquered a city this turn, right? We did just take that, I think. Um, it could also just be a display error. There are some display errors in the UI of Endless Legend. It's unfortunate. It's not nothing game-breaking, but sometimes things aren't exactly as they appear. I'm hoping that's the case, because obviously being fervent is a big deal for us. So, I think we are, at this point, a serious existential threat to the Vaulters. How are we going to finish the job? They have an awful lot of movement left. They actually have all of their movement for this turn, and... How many tiles do they actually have to move to get to Uarden? One, two, three, four, five points of movement, or four and a half points of movement will get them right here. And then if they have to step through here, one, two, to enter the forest, three, four, and they can attack the city next turn, actually, provided that they actually use all of their movement this turn, which they may do when we hit end turn. Uh, that's not ideal, because we are not really in position to play defense here. I do not have any emeralds or anything. We're just going to have to do with 190 points of fortification. I mean, we can uh, we can make some moves here, right? This this Ibatane has a little bit of movement. And we're just going to hope that they don't choose to move as efficiently as possible toward us. If they got to Warden and attacked it right now, I'm not certain that they would win. 190 fortification is an awful lot. And if they try to siege the city, that'll give us time to catch up to them. They're going to have to... If they want to have a chance of taking Warden, they have to go right at it. And I don't think they can pull it off. The Marines are uh, the Marines are pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonably statted. I don't think these Justice Seers are very dangerous. And I think our Militia will probably straight up beat them with 190 bonus health. That said, I'm going to be very eager to build these uh, fortification bonuses in a moment here. After we feel like this war is definitely under control, we can go ahead and pull the people in the city back over to food, have ourselves a little bit of a growth period. But obviously, pretty important to make sure we don't die here. Losing our capital city would be very, very bad. It does kind of seem like they're just stunned, though. Uncertain what to do. Alright, so we finished military science. I think let's go ahead and build ourselves a stronghold architecture. Uh, and actually, can we get, yeah, we can get an infantry cantina in the same turn as well. So this will give us one more militia in the city and another 100 fortification. Yeah, and these guys just are not moving at all. Well, our health regen is pretty good. We could just attack them next turn, right? Yeah, if they don't actually come after us. That said, I'm not actually... At this at this distance, they'll get this city's garrison as reinforcement, right? Yeah, definitely. Not sure if that's actually the best thing to do. I guess we'll see what they do with their movement next turn. And what are we going to do with our research? So we don't really have morale problems. We could just grab... You know what? We're going to grab the public granary. Just more food. More food is good. Just even more food. Never stop making food. Except when you need to pump out military units and defenses so that you can't be murdered. You can see our research, uh, five turns per tech, is still a little bit slower than I would like. Not a ton we can do about it right now. When the winter ends, we can move people back off of dust. 
Are they going to do anything at all? Actually, I'm going to I'm going to move one more time. I just want to put our units in front of their units. Okay, we can move fast enough to respond to them moving toward Anchan, I think. Actually, they could probably just get there right now, couldn't they? Well, if they were to retake it, we would just re-retake it. Okay, so I'd like to build a couple more military units here. Maybe we could create, like, that. And then when we get these four done, my plan is to go back to food production. Hopefully that will coincide with the end of the winter and we'll be able to just really fire up the population. It kind of seems like they're broken, doesn't it? Maybe they're... Maybe upon seeing Anchan fall, they were just paralyzed with fear. I mean, the longer they wait to fight us, the better it is for us, because we're getting all this health regen. Who are these guys? Oh, are these guys the quest army from Inga? They totally might be. Nope, we have incoming. Well, I'm just going to step over here and attack them. Oh, the Urken Fakir has been tamed by an unknown empire. By Purple, who we know to be Vaulters, from the uh, from the symbol here. Well, hopefully that doesn't uh, doesn't mean too much trouble for us. I have to imagine this battle's going to go pretty hard my way. My guess is they're just going to retreat. I'm going to have you guys not join us in combat. I was going to say, we're going to have them not join us in combat so as to preserve their action point, but I guess there's not really a point in doing that if this army doesn't have their action point. Because it's not like this guy's going to go fight a battle by himself. Okay, yep, they retreat. Uh, when they retreat, I don't know if I was clear about this, they lose a certain percentage of their max HP. And also, we still get some XP. Alright, so we're going to progress up toward extra reinforcement positions. We are now starting to have an army large enough that this will actually be worth something. I am glad that I went and got all the bonus health first. I think that was the right call. So you guys may as well just run back here and grab these pearls real quick. And speaking of pearls, our altar will let us know what is up with the next winter. So, the possible effects are minus one food on terrain with food, minus 25% industry on all cities, or minus one resource on strategic extractors, but plus one resource from luxury extractors. Okay. I really don't want either of these to happen. This one, I don't care so much about. So what we're going to do here is we're going to spend a bunch of pearls right now when it is cheapest to, like, put a ton of prayers on this. We'll do two more. All right. My hope here is that the AI will look at the list of prayers, see that this one is ahead by five whole prayers, and say, ah, you know what? It's not worth competing against it. I just won't bother to drop uh, pearls into the other things where they might just end up being wasted. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Well, I can't do much but just wait here. I have no idea what's going on with them. So I don't think there's anything else we want to do. We can uh, we can change up our, uh, our position here a little bit. And I'd like to remain positive, but many people off of dust as I can get off of dust. And if we're going to go back into food production mode, we should build ourselves a husbandry center as we're doing so. This army should, once fully built, be large enough to put away the rest of the Vaulter civilization, I think. For real, I have no idea why they're not fighting back. I assume that this army thinks it's waiting for reinforcements, but like, they can't just sit here. Uh, I mean, we should, we should manual this. They're gonna fight back here, they're not gonna retreat. Because they have so little health that retreating would kill them. Oh, I see that quest army is getting close. I do really, really want to run over there and have at those guys, too. One problem at a time. I don't think there's a lot of tech to apply here. We're going to keep the Gorgons way out because they're not necessary. I'm just going to let them heal. We will set them to hold position mode. Now, notice they're not bringing in any of their reinforcements, which I expected. I kind of figured they would just give up and let these uh, let these guys die. But if that's the case, why bring them over here in the first place, right? Get 
the base game AI has some problems, particularly around combat. Uh, fortunately, there is a fix, and we will be seeing that very shortly. <laughs> Definitely in the next game we play, because I am told that the fix has been updated and is ready to go. Uh, if they were to attack right now, they would just get the city, because we don't have any, any action points left. That is sort of a cool strategy, except that I don't really believe they were doing it on purpose as a strategy. Right, I'm going to separate the Gorgon out from the other troops, because the Gorgon is faster. Let's just get it back up into reinforcement range here right away. We're going to bring the rest of our guys down afterward. So if we attack them while they're standing right there, we will get Perandi's garrison. I don't really have a way of fixing that, unfortunately. But at some point, we're just going to have to go through with this, right? Obviously, I was hoping to shore up our numbers a little bit. And we have. So maybe it's a good idea to just do it now. They're only going to get stronger. I'd really love if we could get all of these units into range first. I guess we'll see what they do on their turn. The fact that they're not attacking right now... Uh, oh, sure, I actually am, in fact, going bankrupt, aren't I? Uh, this is because we have so many armies out right now. Uh, how many people can I move off of industry without affecting the build times here? That many. Okay, we're going to combine these armies up and uh, our army upkeep will drop. But yeah, the fact that they're not attacking right now means that they can't really attack at all because now I have my reinforcement, uh, or I have my action point, and we'll get to reinforce with 100 points of fortification. And they certainly cannot fight us in that state. They couldn't really fight us without it. Somebody else has accomplished a legendary deed. Not really a big concern for us. Where are these guys going? Hmm. I wonder if they've decided that they want to fight the Urken. It does, in fact, seem like they want to go fight the Urken. Well, okay. Then we'll just change up our plan a little bit here. Strange. It's a, <laughs> it's a choice I don't really understand. I'm not going to complain about it too much, though. I suppose it might be really bad if they took that over. I'm not sure how this works. Um... Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, look at this. Somebody has purchased some of these upgrades for the Fakir. I guess that's how Purple got control of it. I just kind of assumed that they defeated it militarily. Oh, maybe they did both, because it is definitely all torn up. Alright, well, works for me. So, uh, you'll notice we are now doing a little bit more fortification damage here. If we move this army adjacent, we'd add an extra 14 on top of this. We probably do just want to go at some point. Like, I don't want to wait until we get all of that down, because that's an awfully long wait. But let's get this Gorgon over here before we uh, before we start stuff up. Or, I guess, wait until we see that blue army turn around. Because I would really rather not fight 12 units. If we can just do, uh, we just do the 7 on 11, that works out pretty well for me. Although, I guess they have a hero and I also have a hero, so the numbers are a little bit different. Oh no! Dust over-exploitation has unbalanced the cycle. Less dust than usual is being harvested from the terrain. Wow, they really have a lot of units running around. Well, that's potentially a problem. Okay, the Vaulters have in fact claimed the Urken, which was easy to do because it had very low health. Hmm... I wonder if we should turn around and challenge these guys with our reinforcement army? Just leave, leave this group to siege Perindy and try to, uh, try to run these guys down. This is an old marine design here. You can see marine too. These troops have probably been away from home for a long time. We might be able to take them. Their stats are not great. I'm going to do that. We're going to try to form that up. So in fact, I'm going to build one more military unit here, I think. Just get us to a full six units in this backup army, since apparently it's going to be an actual fighting army and not simply used for reinforcement. Ozek the Chosen is leveling up rapidly. So we are right on the cusp of being able to completely ignore winter from an economic standpoint, which is just lovely. And we have now properly symbiotized this building. So, plus one science on terrain with science, immunity to food and approval reduction effects on cities due to winter, 
You know, that does reduce the value of a uh, cold operator by some degree, or to some, by some amount, doesn't it? Hmm. We're still only showing as happy. Despite the fact that our only city is still fervent. Does it say on the fungal bloom tooltip? Increases the cost of empire plan and luxury boosters. It does not say that it should be affecting anything else. Okay, interestingly, note the city does show us having five population. Despite the fact that when we click on it, there's no population display, nor any ability to interact with the population. Hmm. Well, I don't quite know what to make of that. Uh, and the construction queue in the city is empty, but also it's inaccessible, so I guess it's going to remain empty. How many techs are we away from moving up in the era? Three more. Okay, well, one thing that I would definitely like to pick up before we move on is the Shambler. I don't think that we are necessarily going to use Shamblers to fight the Vaulters, but we might use them to fight other people. It's a good idea to have them. I would also like access to the other half of the marketplace where we can buy luxury resources and stuff. And we need more dust. Unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of sources of dust. We could go for Glory of Empire, which will give us more approval, or more uh, influence boosting, rather. Oh, you know what we maybe should pick up is Hydrology. Because Hydrology has the canal locks, which is like a husbandry center, but for industry. So at times when we need to convert everybody to industry, they'll be incredibly effective. It's also something to be said for the fact that Apprenticeship Registry is just an awful lot of... Uh, one, one industry on exploitation means one industry on each tile that we are exploiting in our city, which obviously is uh, pretty large. And the extra industry point from forested tiles on the other building from that tech will actually be pretty good for us, too. The question with the canal locks, right, is how often are we going to want to pull people over to industry? Um, and how much time do I want to spend with everybody just working food? I move people around a lot. Let's just go ahead and get hydrology. So that's one. We do want this, but I think this can be our third. Maybe I just get both of these and then yeah we'll uh we'll hold off on imperial coinage for now i guess that'll work we are hemorrhaging money but i'm doing my best to keep people focused on production until the army is finished we're definitely gonna have to pull some people off this turn though so our army's almost back at full health their city is having some problems We have very, very little industry left to go on this guy, so I think we can move a lot of people over to Dust without disrupting that. In fact, everybody. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, we have failed to do this thing because the uh, city that gave us that quest was destroyed. That works just fine for me. The Vaulters have gained the Benevolent Emperor uh, technology because they have an Empire Approval value of 100 when this deed was unveiled because somebody just entered Era 4. I'm a little frustrated by that, because we should be at 100 approval. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, have they come... They've come close enough to the city that I can just attack them with garrison backup. I think let's just go for this. My suspicion is they will retreat here. If they do not retreat, my suspicion is I will kill them. Yep, okay. Well, they're definitely doomed then, because they certainly can't fight us next turn. And they have no movement left. We are, like, absolutely going to engage them at the beginning of next turn. So, basically, everything's going horribly, horribly wrong for these vaulters. And we could take over this Urken with our reinforcement army after we finish them off, I think. I don't think that should be a problem at all. Let's make sure that we grab them uh, before they can do anything else on this turn. As soon as we flip over to 58... They'll stand and fight. We'll do it manually to try to minimize uh, damage taken. And then we'll look at whatever that pop-up was. I think we should get through this pretty quickly. That poor, uh, that poor archer is going last, huh?
Let's see, the Gorgon only has five points of movement. From right here, this Gorgon can hit the Archer, right? One, two, three, four, five. Does mean getting attacked by... Oh, these Justice Seers don't actually all have Cavalry Slayer yet. This is before they were equipped with their spears. These are some really old designs. I think what we're seeing here is them dragging up their... Uh, their worst, oldest armies, just because they're desperate. Get that other Gorgon in this spot here. So actually, probably what we want to do, since we easily have attack range here, is have our guys stand in as tight a ball as possible, with the exception of this guy who's going to flank that archer, uh, so that we get the maximum amount of positive morale from standing near allies as we can get. You need to stop that guy from firing, and honestly... Nobody else needs explicit orders. Just kind of do whatever. I suspect this is going to be a complete rout. But Gorgon is taking kind of a lot of damage. Well, the good news is they can't hit him anymore. Ozek the Chosen himself has shown up for battle. He has no gear on. He's probably not exactly the most terrifying opponent they've ever seen. Let's try to see if we can get this guy out of his jam here. I mean, he's going to have to fight his way through it, but we can keep one of those attacks off of him at least. Nope, he's dead. He needed to roll pretty well to survive there. His Gorgons are very fragile. That's all right, we can just build more. You can see all of our militia coming into battle here. They are pretty scary looking. Actually, everything about our army is pretty scary looking. I'm assuming that they thought they had a legitimate threat on our capital here. Um, in their defense, they haven't been able to see it uh, at all in quite a while. So when they started moving those units over, they didn't know how many uh, units we had in our garrison, nor how much fortification we had. So it looks like a crazy play to us right now. It was probably a little bit more sensible uh, from the point of view of the information they actually had available to them at the time. So do we want to just go right after the Urken? 290 attack with, uh, with 198 damage and 212 defense. But only oh, 388 health. He heals quickly. You know what? Maybe not. Maybe I'm not going to worry about this. We're just going to uh, focus on eliminating the Vaulters. How about that? Whatever threat he poses will be neutralized when the people who control him and hate us are all dead. So another Urken has emerged is what that pop-up was. Here we have Chaka. This is, this is Chaka's thing, right? In theory, we could probably like buy Chaka's allegiance if we were to, uh, if we were to hand over some luxuries. We probably should get the ability to mine luxuries. We're a little focused right now, though. Oh, I see. This makes sense. Uh, Green probably saw Blue's score drop a little bit and decided that this was the moment. Because I don't think Green has actually been witness to any of our attacks, although. They also would have the information that this region changed colors. That might be what they've uh, what they've gone on here. So they have what's left of the force that they used to conquer the very weak Fakir. They have the pretty strong garrison that we know still resides in the city. We're going to try to run these guys over here as quickly as possible just to make it so that they can't retake Anchan. Oh, and yeah, sure, I should be building something, I guess. If we were to move a bunch of people onto food, how many people can we move onto food and keep this, keep ourselves financially solvent? We really need more dust. Also, we really need to get back to uh, back to a higher empire approval status. Well, we have a ton of influence, so we may just buy our way out of both of those problems in a second here with a fancy new empire plan. On turn, 60, on turn 60, we will purchase a new Empire plan. On turn 61, at the very beginning of the turn, our old Empire plan will end, and our new one will begin. So, 
if we are going to pursue an Empire plan that does not involve the plus 30% attack that we... Oh, that's not the button I want. The plus 30% attack on all units that we are currently getting, we should make sure we attack before the Empire plan ends. So, like, what does my Empire plan maybe look like now? Uh, I'm thinking that maybe we do want to buy this 25 approval just to fix whatever the hell is going on with our situation right now. And then we could also... We have so much influence... A reduction in the buyout cost of buildings is probably not worthwhile, considering how screwed up our dust is right now. But this will help us fix that. Extra dust per citizen's working dust. Maybe we just do this. Actually, I like that a lot. So it turns out we're not on the clock then, probably, in terms of our uh, our combat boost. How we are going to maintain it. Uh, so every time we build a building, note that we are increasing the amount of upkeep we are paying in our city. Um, so we are we are lowering our dust output, effectively. That said, I sure do like industry. And then I guess we build burrows. We just keep reaching out further and further here. When the dearth of dust event ends, uh, which will be in six turns, we're going to be in a much better spot. And by then we'll have that new empire plan. I think our economy is going to work itself out. It might even work itself out to such a degree that going for that buyout cost reduction is reasonable. Okay, well, I think it's about to be time. You'll notice that the amount that we're going to reduce their fortifications by is larger than the amount of fortification they have remaining. Uh, at this point, it would be very foolish of them not to do something. Oh, they gained some fortification somehow. Not that it matters. They have decided this is indeed their moment. They're going to go for it. I have to say, this feels unlikely to work. They're fighting for survival here. If we if we beat them here, I think they're just out of the game. So you'll notice that the combat area is a little unusually shaped. If a city that a player owns is at least partially in the combat area, the whole city is in the combat area. It extends to include all of the city tiles. And if our units start in these city tiles, they'll get a little bit of a morale boost for starting in a friendly urban area. I say a little bit. It's like three points of morale for the for the turn that they start in the area. It's a pretty big deal. Each point of morale is 15% uh, attack and damage. Or sorry, attack and defense. So it is, a, it is a pretty huge deal. That said, if our hero starts all the way back here, he won't be able to actually fight anybody this turn. And that would be a travesty. Oh, you know what? No, that's not true. He'll be able to fight whoever comes in on the reinforcement bases. Yeah, actually, I like that quite a bit. And then over here, it started our units way back because it's trying to protect the ranged units. But I think we're better off having them all start together in a big ball here. You guys with your five move. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we'll be able to have the Gorgons still create a wall for the Epitanes to hide behind. I think this is fine. Alright, so my play here is, first of all, the hero charges that marine. This Gorgon comes down here and grabs that guy. This Gorgon comes down here and grabs this guy. You can see these very high morale values, leading to, like, plus 60% attack and defense. The big deal. And, yeah, Epitane's just kind of fire. I mean, we should focus. Everybody should be attacking the same target until that target is dead. Whose arrow is that? Yeah, you. Okay, uh, this should keep them off of our ranged at least for one turn. Their hero is going to get to run out. Can I get one of the Gorgons over to her? I could. Okay, I'm going to do that. Uh, no, I'm not. No, let's use the Gorgons to protect the Epitanes. We'll use the Epitanes to push forward and kill some of these guys later. Yeah, I like this plan. The first plan we had was the right one, I think. We are going to take some damage on our Gorgons. Be ready for that. Remember, though, the units in this army are way better than the units we were using to fight the other army because the effect of those hero skills is significant. Also, our man over there is a tremendous duelist. What a good combat hero. And we definitely made the right choice with having him be a, uh, having him be a fighter instead of a governor. You should make sure that those guys die before they potentially get a turn and ruin everything. Actually, let's have him attack the healthy one over here. 
you guys can run over and easily kill that archer. Does their... Their lord does not have cavalry slayer. She's using a sword, not a spear. Alright, so we definitely... We definitely want to have our guy attack her instead of this guy. We're just going to let this one Sister of Mercy here pick her own targets. This is a big part of the value of melee in this game. Obviously, in every, in every combat game ever, it is always better to have ranged units than melee units in a huge variety of ways. And that's still true here. Ranged combat is superior. Uh, there's a reason that wars are not fought with swords anymore. But the big advantage of melee troops in this game is the fact that you can use them to lock out your opponent's actions. You don't have to worry about all of their nonsense. I guess our hero doesn't really matter that much anymore because the Gorgons are going to uh, take out all of the melee attacks from our enemies long before the hero gets his turn. Well, I do believe they are doomed. So pretty soon we're just going to be gathering all of the resources from their entire empire, in addition to the resources from our capital, and then we're going to use those resources to turn on the Broken Lords, probably. I will say that their militia are doing a slightly better job of surviving. For the record, I don't think that assimilating the Sisters of Mercy and relying heavily on those units is necessarily a bad idea for the Vaulters. And the Vaulters need some good early game melee. They have a powerful melee unit as their Era 2 military research, but having to, having to get to Era 2 and then research it and then start building them can mean that they show up too late. Uh, so if you're in a position like that, it's perfectly reasonable to use your assimilated melee unit as the backbone of your army. And I think this one's an okay fit for the Vaulters. They just didn't bother to develop their military technology enough to survive our attack. Alright, now keep in mind that was a uh, that was defense that you just saw right there, so let's go ahead and actually take the city. And Green is having themselves a little exploration right now. Gee, I wonder why. We could just go after this dude. Because we are at Cold War with him, we are allowed to ta attack him inside of our territory. Let's have a look at his unit stats. So he picked up a cavalry unit that has free counter and cavalry slayer. Pretty good at <laughs> fighting our entire army, really. And this is the core Broken Lord unit, the Stalwart. It's a pretty tough infantry unit. Uh, you can see there it has the Dust Care and Soul Leech abilities. So Broken Lords don't have organic bodies, right? They're basically robots. Um, they do not heal naturally over time, but that Dust Care ability lets them purchase healing. They can basically just pour dust directly into the armor to fix up any problems they're having. Uh, however, any turn that you use the Dust Care instant healing ability, you spend your action point. So they can't do that and fight at the same time. Their stats are pretty bad, except that their defense and life are quite high. It would take us a while to cut through them. The centaurs are also pretty poorly statted. I think they're just not... It seems like the AI is just not developing very quickly here. Uh, like I said, sometimes the core game AI has some problems with combat stuff. And also, like I said, we will be, we will be installing a fix for that between this first game and the second game in the series. So it didn't take our action point to fight the empty city, as you can see here. I might just attack this dude for daring to enter my territory. We're probably planning to kill him off anyway. I don't see a whole lot of value in letting him survive. So yeah, why don't we just have Adam? And then um, after we do this, I'm going to briefly split off the reinforcement army and have them try to grab the... Um, have them try to grab that quest army that we know is still walking around Inca, because I would like to move our faction quest forward. They can do this first, though. There's a chance he'll just run away. These uh, these odds are pretty pretty badly against him. Yeah, very unfortunate. I understand the decision, but he's going to be in a lot of trouble here. All right, let's go ahead and do that Empire Plan. Uh, you'll notice our costs are a little bit higher now because I did not lock in the Empire Plan before taking over the new city. Oops, that's an error. Uh, that said... 
we we only have to miss one thing. What would I what would I drop here? Because I do really want the plus dust per citizens. Well, maybe not, right? When we move up to fervent, maybe we won't we won't need to have people on a, on dust anymore. We just put everybody on food. Yeah, alright, let's do it this way. But I should have locked in our Empire Plan before fighting for the city, because the Empire Plan cost is based on how many cities you have. Alright, so we're going to get that burrow in two turns. I don't know that we necessarily need to build more military units right now. I think we're kind of kicking ass on the military front. Yeah, okay. Uh, you guys don't have any movement left, so I can't actually do anything with you. I'm going to attack this guy at the beginning of the turn, but we're not going to include the second army as reinforcements because I don't want to spend their action point this time. I want them to be able to go hunting. You really only should retreat from a battle if you think there's some chance that you'll be able to get your army away from the enemy. Oh, my military prowess is undisputed. One of the legendary deeds was to be the first to attack and defeat ten armies of other empires, and boy have we been working hard on that. So we've gotten access to the Eye of the Far Thinker, a trinket that can be equipped on any military unit and gives them free counter. Uh, I don't know how much we'll use these because of, because of how expensive they are. Our resource generation is not awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and uncheck you guys and then do this. I don't think we should have any problems here. We get to start in our new city. And... Oh, there's not really a lot of like technique to apply here. I will say that these centaurs are kind of annoying uh, because they are fast-moving units. They're good against. They're good at catching up to the ranged and fighting them. And then they have cavalry slayers. So they're good at fighting at fighting with the guys that we use to keep people off of the ranged. Let's just form a nice tight little ball here for the purposes of morale. Keep these guys away from the archers as best we can, especially since they have. Quite a bit more initiative than the enemies we're used to fighting. Uh, I'm assuming... Let's see. Let's try to figure out what's going to happen. This guy's going to move up and attack the Gorgon. He has Cavalry Slayer. He has actually pretty reasonable stats. I think that we are going to focus on him first with the ranged. I would like it if he went away. He won't actually die unless we kill the entire army, which we probably will. Um, but So usually I, I target heroes pretty late in the order. For that reason. But this guy is actually, by a large margin, the most dangerous unit on the field. So let's get rid of him. And then, the centaurs run forward. Neither one of them can actually reach any of the ranged units, which is nice. Our hero is probably going to get hit during this phase. Uh, and then, they do have one ranged unit. The dust bishop is actually pretty cool. With the life siphon ability, it heals friendly units for 35% of the damage that it inflicts with, with its ranged attack. So this is a good way of getting around the fact that it's awkward to heal your units, is just make sure you're siphoning as much health as possible into them during battle. This guy is probably our second priority target, but I really want to make sure the hero goes down, so we're going to keep all the ranged focused. And then everybody shoots. I think this is the right set of orders. I think we got this. And who knows, maybe he'll just die here. Oof, wow, he almost shredded that Gorgon. Okay, that's a move I didn't predict. Him just running into the middle of nowhere where he can't hit, hit anybody. Okay, I over-assigned a little bit on fighting that hero, apparently. You know, he had better stats. I was just like, what if they don't get him? What if they don't get him? Why don't we try to be sure? You can finish that dude off. Uh, who is the one unit that goes before my hero? That guy? Okay, the Gorgon attacks that guy. Now the Gorgon should finish this guy off. We'll just deal from there. Unfortunately, our hero's gonna have a hard time participating in the battle from this point forward. Because he is all forested in over here. The good news is, the centaurs are weak enough that they're just gonna kill themselves on our ranged. Okay, so do not walk around in enemy territory with your big valuable army unless you're certain that your big valuable army is big enough to ward off any threats. Because uh, if they can attack you, especially if they can attack you within range of a city and bring the city garrison to bear on you, that can turn out really, really poorly. 
All right, let's go over here and see if we can't just push Blue all the way out of the game, and you guys have a job to do. And it's a good thing we kept our action point, because we do, in fact, have range to attack this turn. Hmm, really? Are their stats so good? This seems off to me. Uh, their stats are fine. They do have Cavalry Slayer 4. Our poor Gorgon. Haven't run into a single army yet that isn't brimming with spears. I uh, <laughs> I appreciate his maneuver here. This uh, this makes good tactical sense to me. I think he should probably stay right there. Now, you're good, buddy. Why don't you just take a nap or something? Nope, that's a Depotain. The Gorgon's over here. Still good. Still good. I like the hiding. So again, this is just units trying to take advantage of the uh, morale bonus of standing in a friendly city tile. Alright, well I got the slowdown on them, but I didn't actually kill either of them, which is a real shame. You know what's a really good idea is uh, focusing your ranged units. We would have only had to deal with one of them this turn if I had done that. We're not going to get this guy down either, so he's probably going to kill that Epitane. I will say that these units, although they are not terribly impressively statted, are certainly tougher than the units we've been fighting so far. Okay, so we never did figure out where Perandi was, but somebody who lives there killed the units that were there. And our reward has been 20 Moonleaf, which is a luxury resource that dramatically increases your science output. Unfortunately, we have so many fungal blooms up that our booster cost is now 25, so we can't actually use these yet. Defeat the Ardent Mage army hidden within the unspoiled ruins in Parandi. Your army must be led by a, Ma a Mycaran hero equipped with Zolia's blade. Oh, this is... Parandi's right here. In my defense, I have nothing to say. That's just... I just must have looked right past it a bunch of times. Well, the good news is that's right there. The bad news is, if you'll remember, Zolia's blade is made out of a, ma a material that we can't equip yet. Where is that weapon? Uh, missing resource. Yeah, we're going to need six Hyperium to get this working. So, the importance of getting access to the other half of the resource, or the, uh, the marketplace, has risen sharply since we made our tech decisions. I guess we'll have to come back for the Shambler. Yeah, we really, really, really need that. And now, also, out of curiosity... Uh, Moonleaf, Moonleaf, Moonleaf. Here we go. Urkins under your control spawn lice 50% faster. So, we could, once uh, Khazar spawns, or is this one Khazar? This one's Chaka, right? Yeah. Once Khazar has spawned, if we get some more Moonleaf, we could try paying off the, uh, paying off the Urkin and seeing if they will be cool friends for us. I don't know, I don't know what would happen. Sort of a distant concern. I suppose for now, let's focus on the murders. All of the murders, you know? As you can see, their city is in terrible shape. Green has definitely had at them a bit. And Green is trying to take Fakir away from them as well. Part of the reason this war has gone the way it has gone, I think, is that Green is distracting them from the south. Green is uh, getting their hands dirty a little bit. And I really appreciate that. Not so much that I'm willing to not kill them or anything should be really, really easy to finish the job here. Wow, Blue actually won that little battle down there. I guess the Green's army was probably pretty torn up when it started. So Fakir is hanging tough. His combat stats are considerable. Let's see, a bunch of green units. Okay. So if we were to attack right now... That blue army would not be able to defend, probably. We can't actually see whether or not they have their action point. But I think they initiated that fight against green, right? Because they walked over. So my guess is it would be just me against the two units in this garrison. But we're not certain. And we could wait for our reinforcements to approach. They're not that far off. Also, 100 is a lot of health. If we had to fight all four of these units with 100 extra health... Our units are just fragile enough that I think I'm going to wait. Okay, may as well keep building burrows as long as we're allowed to keep building burrows. So building this one right here, in addition to getting us some extra forest tiles, 
will level up our uh, industrial megapole, and it gets plus 25 industry per level. So we're going to increase our city's industrial capability pretty sharply here. Also, we can definitely move some people back off of dust. Ah, oh, we're only showing us happy now, despite the fact that we have our fancy empire plan on. But, I mean, it's got to do with having conquered additional cities, right? The approval level of these cities still matters to us, somehow, even though we can't see it or affect it. Which feels like a bug? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if anything happens to it when the, uh, the first post-expansion patch drops, which probably will not be too long from now. They're usually pretty quick with that, with that first bug fixer. So our reinforcements do not get in range on this first turn. This right now, they don't know this, but this right now is their best opportunity. They have no idea where my other army is or what it's doing, though. They do not realize how crucial this moment is. Also, there's a lot of green dudes over there. They're probably pretty busy. Wow, they are pretty busy mulching those green dudes is what they're doing. 117 attack with 70 damage. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're definitely tough. Okay, I have to imagine they spent their action point starting stuff with green, because otherwise they would have attacked us there, right? Uh, I'm just going to attack them. I don't know what you guys think you're doing. The city garrison cannot help them because the city is sieged. Garrison can't ride out. You should not run next to an adjacent... You, know, you should not run adjacent to a sieging army if you don't want this sort of thing to happen. So... The good news for them is that the terrain is very favorable to them. Uh, this guy's going to be able to get a melee attack off here. Our hero's not going to be able to do anything to them for a while, though. The bad news for them is everything else about this situation. Okay. I like it. All the ranged units are focused on the same target. This is a good start. Our poor Gorgon's definitely dead. Oh, he survives with 2 HP. Alright, I think he can run far enough to get away. All the way away. They get one turn of actually picking their targets. I hope that was fun. I hope he really enjoyed it. Savor this moment. Okay, so we don't have an action point left to take the city, but we will take the city with our action point next turn. We'll continue leveling up here so we get a little bit of bonus defense on our units. Five defense is not a huge amount. If you have all three of the uh, three points in the skill, 25 defense for an entire army is pretty significant. All right, I'm very eager to have access to Imperial Coinage. We're going to be able to fix a lot of our problems with that. Well, maybe we will. You do have to have dust to make good use of the uh, of the market, as you might imagine. Let's go ahead and move our army into range here, and then we're probably going to want to fan out because it's about to be Dust Eclipse time, and I need to search an awful lot of ruins. You know what? We probably don't have to... No, you know what? We do have to manually resolve this, because if we auto-resolve it, our Gorgon's going to die. I feel certain of that. We can keep this guy around. There's no reason he has to die. You just hold position. Never do anything other than holding position. All right, well, we made short work of their fortifications. If you attack an enemy in a fortified city and you fail to kill them, it does actually still reduce the fortification of the city. I'm not sure exactly how the math works on that. Um, but basically, the more the broad strokes of it are, the more damage you do during the battle, the more effectively you strip their fortification, uh, the more fortification will be removed from the city by the battle. So, if you think that your army is pretty overwhelming and you don't have time, you can do the job by just uh, fighting them once, stripping a bunch of fortification in battle, and then fighting them again next turn. Got ourselves an awful lot of stuff here. And, the Empire of Kavad has been defeated. It lives on only in tales. In a lot of circumstances, I would tell you that when you have just won a war, you don't necessarily always need to just keep pushing. 
Maybe it's a good idea to take a moment, take a breather, you know, sort of reorient yourself before going into the next thing. But we happen to know that green is at a uh, sort of a local minimum of military power right now, since we shredded one of his big armies and he lost a ton of units to blue right before that big city battle. So let's ride on this fool. Let's get let's get this done now. There's no reason I need to have neighbors. Uh, we may as well just keep building out our burrows, right? See, we can build our apprenticeship registry, which is pretty powerful. But as we keep building up our uh, districts, you can see here, the level 2 district, it is actually producing additional dust and stuff. Like, building out the burrows, I think, helps our economy a little bit more. And we can only build a burrow for every two points of... A normal burrow for every two points of population we have. So we will run out of ability to build these at some point. I'd like to just keep pushing until we get to that point, And then we'll build what will, by that point, be a very strong apprenticeship registry. So where are the temple ruins relative to our armies? Like, is it convenient to grab any? That's an unspoiled ruin. That's the wrong type. The temple ruin over here and over here... And we could just, like, detach one Gorgon, have him uh, slither quickly toward all the, all the stuff over here. That might be what we do, because I really do want to press green now before he can rebuild. Speaking of rebuilding, we have been losing units. It is probably worthwhile for us to do a little bit of rebuilding of our own, but... Um, we might want to wait just a minute before we commit any new troops uh, to the queue. Because in a second here, we're going to hit Era 3, and then we're going to have access to a better quality of gear. Also, Dearth of Dust has ended, so the the number here has not recalculated yet. It will soon. And then we will know exactly how many people we can afford to pull off of Dust. I'm hoping it's almost everybody. Alright, so let's grab this Temple Ruin. This Eclipsed Temple. Yeah, there you go. Plus 57. Awesome. Oh, is this... This is locked by that manual labor quest, right? All right, so I want to build a Gorgon over here real quick, uh, both for reinforcement purposes, even though I know I just, I know, I know I just said a thing. I guess we're going to wait one turn anyway. We may as well update him and put him in the queue, but I'm just thinking, like, with all of the temple runes around here, building a unit real fast at Warden and having it run around and claim stuff is probably a good idea. But yes, fine, we'll wait. We'll do this the smart way. All right, let's go, let's go say, say hello to green real quick. We should pull people off of dust, like I said, but I kind of want to build up a little bit of money here so that we can actually use the marketplace. Let us, now that we have access to it, see what everything looks like, and then we'll make that decision. So, first of all, green is like, we, you have eliminated, oh, okay, I was going to say green is like, you have eliminated our enemy, we should be best friends, but no, in fact, they are on top of it, they know what is happening here. Also, purple got close enough to us to see us, so now we have formally met. Yes, our dealings with everybody are brief. And in the end, pretty peaceful. Things are very peaceful between me and my neighbors right now. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and grab Cold Operator now. There's going to be a winter pretty shortly after the dust eclipse. And I know we already have immunity to some of the negative effects of winter, but not the negative dust effects, which are pretty important to us at the moment. Okay, we have gained access to new resources. There's a source of Adamantian in Perendi and a Palladian in Uarden. There's also some Titan Bones in uh, Perendi and Grass Silk in Uarden. Grass Silk uh, gives extra trade route income when used as a booster. Not super relevant to us with, with our no trade routes. Alright, now that we have access to a new tier of gear, we're just going to do the most basic thing here and just replace the iron gear with a higher quality of this stuff. I could also throw a movement boost on. The Gorgons don't need it as badly as anybody else does. The rest of the army is slowing them down anyway. Yeah, I'll just leave him like this. Don't think we want to change anything else about his equipment. And then build me one of those brand new fancy dudes. And then actually, 
well, hold on. Like I said, we should look at the market before we figure out what we want to do with our money. So first things first, Hyperium is available. It is expensive as hell. We need six of it to equip that weapon. Okay, but the good news is we have the ability to sell our own resources off now. So first thing I want to know is there is enough Moonleaf that we could buy ourselves into a Moonleaf booster. Our booster cost is now 31 because we've just acquired a whole bunch more overgrowth. Maybe it would be best to just sell this all. If we did just sell all of this, we would not be anywhere near the amount, right? Yeah. The whole pack of 20 Moonleaf is going to sell for less than 100 dust. You can only sell things in batches of at most 10. When we sell 10 Moonleaf, the price of Moonleaf is going to go down, right? Because the supply increased. So we probably will not get even 100 dust for our pack of Moonleaf here. Which makes me think that maybe we, maybe we want to go in the opposite direction on this one. And just commit really hard to dust for a minute. Because I really, really, really would like to keep our faction quest moving. Get some pretty cool rewards from the faction quest sometimes. And hopefully this will be the only turn this is necessary, because... Ruin searching? Actually, how many people would we have to put on industry to get that Gorgon down to one turn? Because I want that. Him searching the ruins is going to be very helpful to us. Turns out the answer was two. Okay. So we're going to get to search... Well, I guess I get to search this one this turn. We can see out here, uh, fortresses in the ocean. Let's not even worry about ocean stuff right now. We don't have the ability to interact with them. We'll deal with them when we do. Ooh, we could build ourselves a fungus tunnel all the way over to here. Yeah, do that. I want that. I want access to this other landmass. It's pretty cool that these guys can get to other landmasses without necessarily having to build, um, build ships. Let's make sure that the hero army is as full as possible. And there's not another ruin super close by. We could run somebody off to grab that, but it's pretty far away. Yeah, let's just stay focused. So we're only bringing eight units to fight green. I do think green looks a lot weaker than blue did, but we don't know that all of their troops are so weak. It might get, things might get tough as we approach here. So we have access to a whole new tier of technologies. What is this? Be the first to raise one of your heroes to level 8 in order to gain plus 20% health regen on your entire empire. Hey, that sounds pretty alright. And we are very close to that. Got a lot of good XP on our, uh, our starting hero here. This gives us a reduced influence cost on diplomatic interactions for each controlled Urken. That's a pretty significant boost, too. Uh, we could also get even more science buildings. You'll note that these are starting to require a lot of strategic resources to build. We could get ourselves out of our dust problem once and for all. I think I probably want this. The real question is, do we want this before we gain the ability to build mines on the new types of resources that we can see now? I think the answer honestly is yes. We don't need to upgrade our weapons or anything right away. Yeah, we can hold off on acquiring the new resources. I want to get our dust stabilized. All right, so it'd be really cool if we could equip our totally boss new sword before we left our territory here, because you cannot retrofit units that are not in friendly territory. We should also upgrade our Epitane design and retrofit those guys, but that is a concern that comes after the big sword. 130 dust is a pretty good find. I'm going to take these pearls. You cannot have them, and then I'm going to flee from you, because I am definitely not in any kind of position to fight you by myself. Uh, purple met us just in time to know that we murdered Blue. Well, the bad start to our diplomatic relationship. This guy did not actually get built in a single turn. We were lied to. Why, I can scarcely believe it. Okay, so did the, did the price of this change at all? It did not. We're still not quite there. We're close. We can make this happen by selling resources, actually. 
Uh, do I want to just sell the moon leaf? We could sell some other stuff. I don't need our other stuff. None of these resources are very valuable. I'm just going to sell moon leaf. So we buy that. Um, I'm going to sell the rest of the moon leaf, I think. We're unlikely to actually make use of any moon leaf anytime soon. And I want to have uh, retrofitting gold. Or retrofitting dust, rather. All right, you. Great big sword. Turns out we do not need the Shard of Akariel after all. So just for comparison's sake, 77 attack plus 40% attack. 48 damage plus 30% damage. It's actually not even really better than the Shard of Akariel. The Shard of Akariel, to be fair, is an extremely good weapon. Yeah, I would say that these two are, like, in the same class of effectiveness. That said, we have to equip this one for lots of reasons. Uh, while we're here... Do we want to equip anything else on him? Like, we could give him movement and then try to get movement on all the Epitanes. How much would this be, putting this on him right now? Okay, too much to do right this second. That's fine. Let's just get that sword equipped. We'll keep everybody on dust for a minute here so that we can fix up the unit designs in the near future, but I suppose it only takes, it only costs us one extra turn to hang out long enough to get some retrofitting going. Or it costs us only a single point of movement. <clears throat> so Vanaran here has 130 fortification and five units in its garrison, two of which we expect to be um, militia. They also have this centaur here who has not very good statistics. Fast though. We gotta give him that. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, so obviously we have to get our hero over here to search this ruin at some point. Let's take Vanaran and then worry about that. Maybe we can grab that on our way to our next conquest. Yeah, Alright, must be led by a Mycaran hero equipped with Zolia's blade. Couldn't be any more straightforward. This guy will actually be finished next turn. He can start searching ruins for us. Remember... We do still have this tunnel, so we could uh, we could jump from this ruin over to here if we wanted to get some of those, maybe. And everybody's on dust, yeah? Okay. Once we have our retrofit settled, we're going to go back to everybody on food. Make sure we mash the uh, heck out of this move order. Try to get this guy away. Oh, they had extra movement saved up that they didn't spend until after we declared our turn was over. Come on, get around the cliffs. Alright, I think we should be safe here. Is this going to be green closing their borders on me? Well, we have an answer for that. Alright, so let's have a look at Ipatane designs. Probably, mostly what we want to do is just upgrade the existing gear. But we maybe want to remove the iron ring? Like, the sharp sense isn't actually helping them anymore. And if we were to remove the iron ring but replace it with a movement trinket... How expensive would that retrofit be? That is a very large number. So not something we could do right now. Out of curiosity, if we didn't do the movement trinket thing, it was just like completely the wrong button. We didn't do the movement trinket. Then it's not very expensive at all because the, um, the cost of the gear, the cost of the armor upgrades, is mostly covered by the fact that we removed the rings. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I can definitely afford that. So our stats are even better now, and we have a ton of health. And I think we're just declaring. Yeah, removing the ring exactly covered the boost in industry cost of the better armor. That's pretty funny. You know, not funny, haha. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, come on, show me a large amount of dust. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to move you up to here. Okay, so we got some adamantium and a large amount of dust. It is not going to cover the cost of equipping movement trinkets here. We are going to do this, though. Any new ones we build, I want to have the movement trinket on. Uh, and our lord will also pick up a movement trinket once we get some of those retrofits going. At the moment, 
a whole bunch of our units are keeping this army only having four moves, so it doesn't make too much sense to stress out about uh, any one of them. We might keep people on dust a little bit longer. Yeah, maybe. I really do want to get these retrofits done. Just keep building along and leveling up our districts here. At this point, every district we build is approval positive because it's leveling up another district. So there's really no reason we would ever stop, except that we will run out of ability to do so at some point. Our approval is still screwed up because of all the conquering, I assume. I'm pretty curious what uh, trait we get from conquering these guys. And I think at this point... Like, we can upgrade some of the Epitanes, right? Oh, no, I, I guess everybody's stats are upgraded, though. Yeah, whatever. I think we're good. Let's just uh, go on and push in. At this point, would I reach... I would not reach the city this turn. That being the case, I guess there's no sense in declaring war, because if I just declare war from right here, next turn, we will actually be able to reach. Well, I think you are... Yeah, you're going to be able to probably get one or two more searches off, I hope. I think the this Dust Eclipse should last at least a few more turns. Let's have you guys be headed towards safety. I guess we can get into friendly territory this turn. Although I need to make sure that we're going around these cliffs. So we'll declare war next turn. Next turn when we can just suddenly hit Vanaran. I do not think he will figure out what we're doing. That may seem a little bit silly, but uh, I think we probably are going to get the element of surprise here. Listen, the AI on Impossible is not uh, not incredible. Enough of your grubby hands on our pearls. Oh, that's true. I did steal pearls right out from in front of them. All right, let's see if we can get... Oh, no, you're going to need another turn of movement. I was going to say, let's see if we can get enough money to maybe be able to do a bunch of retrofits here. But no, we're just going to have to go into battle without our movement trinkets. Oh, see, he is bringing units back in, uh, back into position. I actually would kind of like to catch these guys outside the city, maybe. If we could take on their army a little bit piecemeal, that would be really good for us. So they have a whole bunch of dust bishops running around. Uh, with very, very low attack values... You're going to often see them doing half damage, and half damage is going to really negatively affect how much their life siphon is going to heal for. Stalwarts are also still pretty badly statted. Can we reach these guys this turn? We cannot. Alright, I'm going to declare war and just attack those guys right now. Hey buddy, surprise! Probably not that surprising. And who knows, maybe he'll decide that he can just take us? And what I would really like to do is attack these guys in such a way that they can't participate. Like I said, we want to take the army on piecemeal. Alright, let's see if they want to just do it. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll think that their city militia is strong enough to fight back. Nope, no big surprise. Uh, we could retrofit these guys, just make them real, real fast. I think I'm going to devote an awful lot of dust in the near future to making sure everybody has these movement trinkets. So, you know what, why not? Go ahead and do that. Our hero should be absolutely terrifying at this point. I'm eager to see him in actual combat. Uh, I guess we'll just put you over here behind them. And then let's get our... Sorry, let's get our smelting station research because we do want to be able to build those. Dust refinery in the queue here. So we still need, what, 700 dust? make this work we are next turn going to get a couple of uh sorry one ruin search but probably another ruin search the turn after and there's still stuff we can sell maybe you know if we get close if we can get close we might be able to make it happen i'm going to engage with these guys right now before they have the chance to uh to move away from us or before those guys have a chance to move in on us we may as well manual it Again, this is just about keeping this Gorgon alive until we get into the real stuff. 
Right now, we are in no danger. He can afford to just chill. Wow, I'm giving this. They're fast. We can probably heal off all the damage they've done there in, like, a single turn. Alright, and then we have the movement necessary to siege the city, so I suppose we ought to. How much movement does this army have? Seven right now? So I want these guys to be in a position where they can't get attacked by this army. If they want to engage us, I want them to engage with my main force. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We don't want to be right there. But I think we can be on this side of the city safely. Oh no, that's a ruin. But we could be right here. The city garrison might uh, pop out and attack us. But I'm just going to come over here and contribute our 10, uh, 10 extra fortification damage. And you guys probably ought to be retrofitted and then probably ought to just head over here and join the battle, right? There's not any other uh, ruins to search. Those are way away from us. We could just run this way. No, I don't think he's going to get to do any real ruin searching. So yeah, come and join us, but come and join us via a safe-ish route. I suppose, actually, this will be fine because we'll get to move at the beginning of the turn. Yeah, like that. That'll be fine. And you move over to here and grab this, and then we get to grab that next turn. I think that probably will happen. Under Dust is extremely welcome. Awful lot of purple ships in the ocean. Makes me a little bit nervous. They don't really pose much of a threat to us for now, but it makes me nervous. You know, actually, if I move over here, we just attack the city garrison right at the beginning of the turn, we can probably just take the four units that are in there at this point without having to worry about his reinforcements, then we can fight them afterward. Let's just do that. And then, actually, that should probably be where we end the episode, because I didn't realize how much time I'd been playing already. You know what? I just really like these endless games. I don't know if that is, uh, if that is clear from the channel's upload history. So we got to wait for the button in the corner there to uh, unglass for it to become the normal whitish color, or the normal blackish color, rather. Oh, item costs have skyrocketed. Something is wrong with the metals of Origo. We have some unwanted oxidation occurring. Well, that is a thing that actually can be dealt with, believe it or not. Should definitely have told you to move before starting that. I just wanted to get it done before they moved. But I also don't want to be in range for them to retaliate against us. So their city is... They did manage to get a fifth unit in the garrison. These stalwarts are not very not very dangerous, but they are tough as hell. Militia with, you know, militia stats. Lots of attack. And this guy also is not very impressive. Okay, I think we can probably handle this. I don't think there's any version of this where they kill us. The only real danger here, potentially, is us failing to get the job done in time. I think we're going to be alright. Uh, so these guys... They are sword units. They do not have Cavalry Slayer, which is good for, good news for our Gorgon. Maybe he'll actually survive the battle. Don't put any money on it or anything, but maybe. Who does he want to attack? He probably just wants to attack one of the stalwarts up front, I think. Like, yeah, this is fine. Uh, left to his own devices, he will probably try to move as much as possible f before attacking his target, because he has the charge skill, which gives him extra attack per movement point spent. Um, but I... I guess we can have him attack over here. Have you focused there. And then... Really should be just everybody... Everybody focusing on taking down stalwarts one by one. Although maybe it's not correct to attack a stalwart in the city. Because of all that morale. I guess all their other units have more morale. At least as much or maybe more. Let's just make sure everybody's focused here. My number one UI request, if they were going to make another big change at this point, would be a button that is like all of my units switch targets to this guy during the uh, during the order assignment phase there. Because I feel like that's a task I do a lot. 
where I'm just making sure everybody's focused on one enemy. But it's kind of cumbersome, the way the UI is currently. Jesus, that sword. It turns out it is a very, very good sword. And I'm at the Gorgon flee from the militia with their cavalry slaying antics. We can drop this guy very easily with our hero. And see, this is a great example of what I'm talking about. It would be really cool if everybody was just, like, focused on one guy here. Make absolutely certain he goes down before he gets a turn. Or, sorry, after he gets a turn, I guess they're... Their stalwarts are actually fast enough to preempt some of our range fire. If you're wondering why not all of our units have the exact same stats, even though they do have the exact same loadouts, part of it is level. Not all of our units are the same level, and units, when they level up, they do get extra stats. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough to make a difference. Man, that sword, plus free counter, is a very powerful thing. I think he's probably going to kill this militia from full health. Yep, easily. One thing I didn't mention about the stalwarts and their weird healing stuff is that if a unit on our side of the battle dies, every stalwart that attacked it on that turn will get a uh, will get a heal. So that is a thing we have to be careful about. All right, so we've got a glass steel extractor and three Delvers villages in this region, and also access to a new symbiosis bonus. What would they give us? Plus one dust on terrain with dust, plus one health regen per pacified village on empire. Wow. That would be quite a lot of extra health regen at this point. We are very, very tough already. And our, our army took actually almost no damage there. It's just the poor Gorgons that are constantly getting manhandled. Well... I kind of want to run over and threaten these dudes, but honestly, maybe I don't have to. They might come to us. But if I make it really easy for them to come to us, that might be a little more likely to happen. The only reason I might not want to do that is because it would sure would be cool to come over here and work on our faction quest. But I suppose we ought to make sure these dudes are dead. So we'll commit in this direction. Actually, you know what? This is the ruin for the quest, right? A Vengeance Renewed? I'm going to have our... Uh, our sped up Epitanes here with the extra trinket. Go ahead and run for this. We'll do this battle and then reassign the hero over here, complete this quest, and have the two armies meet up and just transfer units into the hero's army to refill it. Yeah, we can do that. Alright, so that will be the plan for next time. Oh, I guess we still have a little bit of stuff to do this turn. Yeah, purple is looking larger and healthier than any of the other players we've fought so far. I don't know for sure that we're going to pursue a purely military victory, but if we were going to, purple is definitely making me a little nervous. Something is eating away at Auriga, literally. Reports have come in from many empires that the quality of metals has drastically decreased. It has become very expensive to forge or craft new items. Rumor and science both point to ruins as the cause, as apparently some magic has been slowly eating away at strategic resources. If you are to stop this effect, you must interrupt the cycle by delivering these arcane metals to the ruins in order to overload whatever magical agent is behind the curse. All the empires of Auriga have an interest in putting an end to this phenomenon. So, uh, this is actually a cooperative quest. Between the lot of us, all of the players in the game, we must donate a total of 40 palladian to the ruins. Each time you search a ruin, it will cost 8 palladian, and once that has been done 5 times... Uh, the effect will go away, all of the strategic resources will... Or all of the items made out of strategic resources will have their normal costs. Uh, every time you contribute, you get 100 dust. Whoever puts in the most times gets 40 mithrite, and the thing will be cancelled. This is a pretty good set of rewards here, but unfortunately, we have zero palladian. The uh, mid-tier resource that we have a bunch of is the other one, unfortunately. There is palladian on the market, but it's 40 dust each, which is... Uh, non-trivial. We do have also a deposit of Palladian in our capital area, but remember our extractors are really weak, so it would take us an awfully long time to build up 40. It just might be hard to build good units for a while. I think that is uh, not a thing that is avoidable at this point. 
All right, well, I think that this is looking pretty good for us, and that is going to be where we stop for today. So, thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time, tomorrow, brand new episode for the fall of the Broken Lords, we hope. Fingers crossed. And we'll see you then.